The horror of real life moments. Ah, but. <laughs> That almost looks like the wording from The Simpsons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like The Simpsons I was like, spot. whoa, this is cool. And you're like, it's The Simpsons. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I'm clicking this button, apparently. Three, two, one. Oh, what's going on? Oh, Satan. Uh, yeah. It's... Well, hello there, traveler. We wonder, how will the story end today? Please sit tight, traveler, and enjoy. Ever since you were a child, you had always hoped you would find yourself on an adventure. Yeah, it's true. In all that time, you never took into consideration that adventure could happen at any time. Any time. You've been awaiting awaiting an important call, a possibly a possibly life-changing call. Why does time feel like it stops to a crawl in these important moments? So is this part like directed towards you or is this I think this is our like horoscope or something. Yeah. The phone begins to ring. Time to make a decision. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, so it's like tarot cards, you know? Yeah. Or tarot cards. So which one do you want to pick? The one to the right. This one? Yep. Why? I don't know. Just well, seems right? I don't know why not. Launching yourself in the air, you feel similar to many of the cartoon heroes you've watched as a child. Too bad you're not in a cartoon, and you really <laughs> didn't think of the, this out before doing... Before going... Bleh, before going for it. <laughs> Too bad you're not in a cartoon. Oh. You, I, b and badly? Land. Oh. <laughs> you land badly. Your ankle aches furiously. No bones are broken, but you've slipped the, car the carpet and caused some furniture to shift, including a chair to knock over. Good try, though. Looking over at the phone on the table... It's vibrating. It's all its way to the edge of the table. <laughs> Hopefully it'll fall and you can crawl over the to answer it. Narrations with Mari. Always Mo an adventure. Moving towards the table slowly, you notice the weird sensation on the back of your neck get more intense. You sense something behind you. Your roommate was supposed to be out late tonight, though. So, huh. Your roommate is always being an immature prankster. Sometimes you wonder why you'd ever rely on such a little troublemaker. What? Somehow are you, Somehow are? Wait. Somehow are you a little jerk? Huh. Never ends oh. up on the furniture roommate interview sheet. Somehow are you a little jerk? Oh. Never ends up on the fur on on the future. Ah. Uh. Just because somebody's trying to get their giggles on all the time and is possibly stoned doesn't make them a bad person nor a bad roommate. At least he's been up on rent. Never misses a beat. Sometimes we are misunderstood. Still hard to... Okay. Can we answer the phone now? Still hard to excuse them for being a trouble e-maker. What? Oh, a troublemaker. <laughs> it's hard for me to read this. On your big day, they really shouldn't even be here. They had been talking about their plans for ages. It's good to know they've ha they have a cool crew to spend time with, even with everybody being so busy these days. It feels like the world is spinning faster and we've all had to learn to compensate, and it's causing us to drift apart. The only way to get back at a prankster is with your own prank pranksterisms, which is a world you just made up and are hilariously proud. Okay, are we going to answer the phone? Yeah. What the hell? You decide to fling your arm back behind you, hoping to hit them in the leg before they even can register you've moved. You believe yourself to have these sort of unworldly, super quick reflexes, but it's really just childish. Your arm hits something, but not a leg. For a moment, it felt like what best could be described as a metallic water, and then, nothing. Sensations turned to nothingness, a physical sensory void. This is wrong. Something is wrong. 
you turn your body around to face whatever is behind you. For a moment, you see a very decadent mirror, so ornate and majestic, somehow it seems pleased. Just as quickly as you notice it, it is gone. Is this all just based on that one thing? Yeah, Stacy. God. You picked your path. <laughs> yeah. You try to ref- try to flex the muscles of your arm, but it feels wrong. Nothing you nothing looking down, you see that from the elbow down, your right arm is gone. Absent nothingness. Uh no blood, just nothingness. Void. The end of one story and the beginning of another. Well? I wonder, this is kind of like, um, uh, shit. Or was that <sighs> the Twilight Zone? Where it's like they just tell, like, some rando story. Like some rando, bizarre vignette of a story. Yes. Well, hello there, traveler. We wonder, will the story end? How will the story end today? Please sit tight, traveler, and enjoy. Blah, blah, blah. I choose this one. Everything has been leading up to this call. It's strange to think that in this day and age, we still make phone calls, but hey, that's just how it is. There still hasn't been nationwide adoption of data calls, so it's got that old analog feel to it. The one little analog relic in a world of ever-connected digital devices and services. If only you could find the strength and courage to answer the call. You've awaited, you've waited all day for it, and now that it's happening, it's terrifying. Change is hard, natural, and difficult. Your hands are shaking harder and harder with every ring of the phone. Everything reaches a point where it's as if everything is shaking. <coughs> this is like an anxiety twilight zone. Yeah, this is ridiculous. You may be a mess, but not this much of a mess. Attempting to focus temporarily, you notice it isn't you, but the apartment. Oh, okay. Yeah. Welcome to the anxiety zone. Yes. In another dimension. Welcome. You had a panic attack. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with your mind. Yes, there is. A little bit. Yes. You're having a panic attack. You're having... You should... <laughs> yeah. You should definitely go see the doctor about it and ask for help. This... Is the anxiety zone. <laughs> the apartment is vibrating, and it seems like some little trinkets on the coffee table are lifting themselves into the air. The anxiety might really be getting to you, or something really weird is happening. Wow, okay, so you get psychic, po- you get uh, telekinetic powers from your Turn anxiety. Turn into Jean Grey. Yeah. <laughs> Everything just starts lifting all over the place, bursting into flame. Man, if, if uh, telekinesis was a side effect of uh, anxiety... I'd be so happy. We'd be screwed. No, because then you could, like, learn to channel it, and then we'd be rounded up by the government. Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> but then we could have an uprising. That's their favorite. Uh, and then I, the most anxious of us all would be the most see, powerful. I just envision all, like, the panic attacks I've had and, like, envisioning me accidentally killing somebody every but single time. But that's how every story begins. Oops, I my powers killed someone. I can never use them. But then you later figure out that you can. Like, Oh oops. no, I killed my mom. Oh, oh no, I like suck powers out of people when I kiss them and I accidentally killed my potential crush. Oh no. Yeah, but he was a guy. <laughs> <laughs> You put your hands over your eyes and take long, deep breaths, focusing on your breathing. Everything seems to c- to a calm, to come to a calm. This is hard to read. It's like the font. Yeah, and it, it bends. The phone is still ringing. You get up and answer it. It's the company you did interviews for a while back, and they are offering the position to you. 
You calmly and quietly accept the position, slump on the floor, and listen to the hiring details patiently. The end of one story and the beginning of another. Wow. This is like every day, like... Yeah. <laughs> horror. Let's, re- let's do the last one. The horror of real life moments. Ah, oh, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> oh god I'm so nervous waiting for this job interview call <laughs> I wonder if there are only three maybe we'll see You may be waiting on an important call, but that doesn't mean you have to make a fool of yourself because of it. Look at how sexy they are on the couch. They're being sexy. Um, Or, I feel like this is a sexy couch situation. Let's keep going. (laughs) Like a cool street cat, you take your time, enjoying every step towards the phone. See, I knew it! Sexy, sexy couch time. Where you Trying too hard. (laughs) No, you're, you ever just sit there and feel like... By yourself? Yeah, by yourself, and you're like, yeah. Like, you know, like, put some heels on and a dress, but you're by yourself, and you're like, yeah. Pretty hot shit. No. You've never, like, just I have in the fancy. past. I don't do that anymore. I, do. I don't feel, like, sexy by myself. What? No. What? <laughs> this call... I don't think it's... I don't think it's weird. I think that a lot of people do that. Yeah, you stay home and you get fancy. Yeah, And then no. you make yourself, like, a fancy juice. No. And you pretend it's a cosmopolitan. No, I'm too busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's probably why you're so stressed out, because you haven't made yourself a fake cosmopolitan. <laughs> this call has held up your entire day. It can have the patience to wait a moment. You're a cool adult who definitely deserves respect. Oh, she's going to, like, miss the call. <laughs> wow, this is never really being the sort of person to be relaxed, to take calm, thoughtful steps, you're noticing that this is just a total foreign experience to you. Is this like, is these, is each of these stories like a different way people deal with like intense emotions? Maybe. It feels like this person might be dissociating, but... Such a small little thing, but it feels totally new. What would life have have been like if you weren't such a quick, reactive, and impulsive child, you wonder, as you pick up the phone? The ringtone is chiming in ways it usually doesn't, as if the sound is coming through a tunnel, like a cave of crystals, and the sound echoes through vibrating each little particle. Your phone feels almost magical in your hands. Is this person tripping? I don't know. And goddamn, if you haven't pumped yourself for this call, you're ready. Sliding the phone unlocked to answer the call, you throw yourself backwards onto the couch. You land perfectly. Maybe too perfectly. Oh, they're gonna say something dumb when they answer the phone. Nothing feels right. Maybe they're asleep. You answer, hello? As you do, everything around you seems to fade and change, looking around calmly, because remember, you're a cool adult who definitely deserves respect. You notice a very decadent mirror floating above. The mirror doesn't show a reflection of where you are. It seems to be more of a window to your apartment, and it may be shrinking. Or is that your or is it that you're falling? To me, in my personal opinion, it just feels like like one story was the person like using fantasies to deal with stress and other person was like just super anxious and this person's dissociating from really stressful situation but that's just my opinion mm-hmm. it's like three different ways of dealing with a really stressful situation that's not actually like bad mm-hmm. you're finding it strangely calming to float through this infinite ether a sound crackles through the phone which you really didn't notice was still beside your ear. Who could pay attention to a little thing like that in a situation like this, with a new reality around yourself? The sound from within the phone feels so impossible, your brain aches from exposure to something it never ever really wanted to witness. The sounds turn to words. You are not welcome. The only thing you can muster is, the hell? They shouldn't have brought you here. 
You notice all the crystals closing in on you. It seems they are being controlled. You struggle as they cover you. Terrified and crystallizing, you scream back at the voice. Take me back! I didn't want any of this! I never brought you here, echoed the voice around you as the crystals grow on your skin. A light engulfs you and all that surrounds you. The light is gone as quick as it came. You find yourself back in your apartment. Your heart is beating furiously from adrenaline. You feel a cold, strange chill in your hands. In your hands, you find a large crystal from before, encasing what was once your phone. It's so decadent and beautiful in contrast to your basic apartment. Inside it, you can see a message frozen on the screen. We are sorry. We didn't mean any harm, is all you can see. Aliens. She didn't make her, uh... She didn't get hired by the aliens. She didn't get her job at the alien ship. How are you going to answer job calls now? The end of one story and the beginning of another.